Hello, this is Dustin with Home Mender, and today we have our salute to carpenters. Carpenters are awesome. They build our homes, our decks, our fences. These guys are amazing, and building is like a science, so that would make these guys scientists. So I'm gonna show you a few tricks about being a carpenter. It's gonna let you dazzle the boss, and a big shout out to my number one carpenter, Jesus. Let's get to it. Now carpenters have their own lingo, their own tools, and their own way of doing things. Now the very first carpenter tool that he needs is the pencil. Why so weird? Well, one, it won't roll off the roof when you're up there fixing it. It can also be used as a quarter inch or a half inch spacer, and the leads are super tough, so they won't break easily like other leads. Looking like a carpenter is part of the deal, like a pencil behind the ear, in the ball cap, or even a tape measure on the belt. Now the tape measure is the second most important tool for a carpenter. I like the standard tape measures because they're easy to read and if you've ever gotten to the job and realized that you bought a metric tape measure, you'll realize that they are not your friend. A little different than in a typical standard tape. And I also like to buy the $4 tape measure because I end up leaving them, losing them, breaking them. So I like to buy the cheap one and I'll just buy three of them and that way I'll always have something to measure with. Now measuring it with a tape is pretty easy. It's usually only taken down to the 16th. No carpenter will really go into the 30 seconds, as far as I know. That's a 16th is every single one notch on the tape. When I measure, I like to use like the terms 23 and a heavy quarter, which means it's a little more than a quarter, but it's not quite a 16th bigger. On the other end of that, you could also say 23 and an easy quarter, which means it's just a smidge under 23 and a quarter. Now, no carpenter would ever say the term smidge. Another cool thing on the tape is this little silver piece. You can notice that it has a little bit of play in it, and that's to make up the distance between when you're grabbing on something to measure the distance or if you're butting to it. And the really cool ones have a red mark on the 16 and the 32 everywhere you would lay a stud. This one does not, this one does. Now when carpenters measure, they don't mark it with a line like normal people. That's because a line is two different lengths. They mark it with a crow's foot. The commoner's line branches out to form the crow's foot, so the one at the heel of the footprint is his true measurement. And that's where he knows where to put his square. Now I know it seems silly to call a triangle a square, but let me explain. This little baby can give the carpenter any angle that he wants, gives him the common 45 and the straight edge, and it gives him a true 90 degree angle, allowing him to make a straight cut. They can also measure the pitch of a roof or give you any angle that you need within 90 degrees. Now you need to decide, do you save the line or take the line? What if it's not a measurement? Maybe he just gives you a cut to make. You ask him if you save the line or take the line. Saving the line means saving it and keeping the line on the piece of wood that he wants. Taking the line means we're gonna cut the line off of this piece of wood. It just gives it a more precise cut. Now you could cut your line with the scale saw or you could use your square. Set the saw blade at your line, butt this to the edge. Perfect cut every time. On to the skill saw. I like to use the cordless. Now skill saw is actually a brand name. This is called a circular saw and its specialty is straight cuts. It's best to cut and let whatever you're cutting fall off. Like don't grab it, let it bind up the saw. Now the cut I just made was a cross cut. You could also rip the board, which means cutting it long ways. It actually has to do with the which way the grain of the wood is running, but a rip, you're usually running the board lengthwise and a cross cut is a shortcut. Now with ripping a board, say you want a one inch rip, you can measure over, one, one. Then you can take a chalk box. Pop a line, but it's really messy and it takes a lot of time. I'll show you a different way. You can set to your one inch and then pinch the side of your saw, running it alongside of your board that you're cutting to get an exact straight cut. 
Okay, if I set my board right there at the one inch mark, hope you can see this, and then I pinch my saw right here, I would be able to use my finger as a guide and run it all the way down the board. Perfect one inch rip. Look at your ripping boards. You're fancy. One more cool trick. If you set your saw blade to 45, right there on that mark, you can use this as a guide. And you get a straight 45 every time. So that's it, just a few tips and tricks about being a better carpenter, I can't tell you anymore because they'll kick me out of the club. So for Home Ender Inc., this is Dustin. I hope you learned something today, and if you did, don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks for watching.